Each sport has its legends. And with that comes great rivalries. From past tennis champions McEnroe and Connors. Uh -oh, now all of the officials are around. To present day Formula One giants, Hamilton and Vettel. How have you been touching my car? Is that <laughs> he was looking at your car. He's looking or touching. He's not touching. touching my car. Oh. However, these competitive matchups inspired generations of young athletes around the world. From swimming to American football. All hoping to become a legend in their own right. The same can be said of soccer, or football, as the rest of the world calls it. Legends such as Pele, Maradona, and David Beckham have dominated the pitch for years. It's all about controlling the game and passing the ball and just being in control of the actual game. But there has never been a rivalry or a better matchup of two football super athletes than Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano, such a great talented player. And Lionel Messi. Messi! Goal! 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 Each have scored hundreds of goals. And even tied on the number of Ballon d'Or wins. A mí me encanta Cristiano Ronaldo. Me parece un jugador brutal. Me parece un jugador irrepetible. Me encanta también Messi. Cómo dilucidar quién es el mejor. Desde luego por los premios individuales no puede ser. Yo creo que los dos van a pasar como los mejores de la historia. Quiero Essentially, I think Lionel Messi just about edges it on, on natural talent and his ability to change a game and be a player that works for the team. But Ronaldo is just a fantastic athlete and someone who's so explosive. He can affect games and he's, he's proven through his career that he's affected games. Messi, su fútbol se basa prácticamente en su, en su talento, en su visión de juego, en su técnica, en la manera que tiene de darse la vuelta. Cristiano Ronaldo ha dejado los regates, la técnica, las bicicletas en servicio de marcar muchos goles. Cristiano es unbelievable. He's still doing it. He's been all records of Real Madrid. He's never injured. Plays every week. You know, it's, these guys are just... Uh, he and Messi are unbelievable. In my mind, I'm always the best. I don't care what the people are thinking, what they say. In my mind, not just this year, but always, I'm always the best. There's no question about it. He's been the best striker for the last 20 years, you know, without doubt. And I think he can continue, Wayne. You know, he's, he's still got the drive to do it. Some people get to a stage in life and say, well, you know, I've done enough, but he's not done enough. He, he knows that. But to understand who really is the greatest, you have to first see how each became the legend they are today. Argentina, a land rich with culture and sometimes tumultuous political history, down in the province of Santa Fe, the River Rosario lends its name to a place that claims Messi as its hometown hero of the beautiful game. Born on June 24th, 1987, to a working class family, he enjoyed a rather normal childhood. His father was a factory steel worker and his mother a house cleaner. Leo Messi grew in an Argentina that uh, were financially unstable. Uh, parents didn't know if they had enough money to pay for all they had to pay for at the end of the month. And uh, in, those, in that environment, uh, a lot of Argentinians started thinking, should we move? Should we go abroad? Both very close, loving families, close communities. I believe that if they hadn't been born with the talent that they'd been born with, both of them probably wouldn't have strayed that far from home. They probably would have made their lives um, in those places, in those, in those towns and villages. In a country enamored with Diego Maradona, football is a way of life. Maradona said that he is the next me. And I know there's been a few players in Argentina that have carried that mantle without success since uh, Diego Maradona finished. But one of the things Maradona says is that the ball is always glued to his feet. He almost accelerates quicker with the ball at his feet, which is something, a phenomenon that we really haven't seen. When you have that type of respect and by their own peers, and when you have someone like a, an Omri or Zidane say the things they do, you know that they are special. When you see what Messi does and the way he makes the game look so simple 
and graceful. He's a genius. Messi followed in the footsteps of his two older brothers, Matthias and Rodrigo, when he joined Newell's Old Boys, the local football club. Uh, like, like a football talent, they will try to to see if that will give them the opportunity, at least to the kids, to, to develop and maybe just become professionals. So a lot of uh, players in Argentina started leaving very early. Uh, Perhaps destiny was at play as Messi received a club jersey as his first birthday present, and he was raised by an entire family of Newell fans. His father, Jorge, was Messi's biggest cheerleader. And they would call themselves middle, middle class. Uh, the, the, the Messi's would say that they belong to that middle class of that time in Argentina when, when Messi was grow, growing up. Middle class doesn't really mean what we call middle class. It was perhaps a working class, uh, people with, with ambition. That's what they were, they were. But the crisis in Argentina meant that they were open to other possibilities. In fact, uh, the Messi's thought about going to Australia. And you wonder if uh, Leo Messi had been brought up in Australia, if he would be a player. The youngest Messi brother made quite a first impression, scoring four goals in his Newell's debut as a six-year-old. He's predominantly left-footed, as we all know, but what a left-footed is. There were times when you just can't get the ball off him. Defenders would try kicking him, they tried the physical approach, and still the fantastic balance that, that Messi has, unshakable off the ball. While Messi's skill set was undeniable, so was his diminutive stature. Messi's lack of height had stood out to a recruiter from River Plate. This is a guy that, for, for a long period of his childhood, they thought was never going to be able to play professional football because of his growth deficiency. Almost as though he's got the better centre of balance now because of his diminutive size. River Plate ordered testing for Messi, and at 11 years old, he was diagnosed with a human growth hormone deficiency. The medical costs were so expensive that River Plate, in a time of economic crisis ravaging Argentina, were unable to pay for Messi's treatment. Jorge used their savings to pay for what would only amount to a partial treatment for their son. It's frightening to see because you've got two such great players now, perhaps the greatest two footballers that certainly we've seen for 20, 30 years, might have been lost to the game purely on health issues. And it's a testament to their own strong will and determination to overcome those barriers and to carry on playing and carry on learning and go on to prove themselves as they have done. Back on the pitch, Barca's interest in Messi continued to rise. His parents moved the family to Spain and to be closer to the La Liga franchise. It was only the move to Spain that provided him with the funds to have the private medical treatment that enabled him to grow into his body. In a way, it's a, the perfect storm to be brought up in a country that loves football but also that pushes you out because there is not enough money for, for you to get everything you need. Uh, and then all that makes you mentally strong, etc. You, of course, have to have the talent too. Messi tuvo la suerte de que el FC Barcelona lo trajo a la ciudad cuando era muy pequeño. Se formó aquí. Fue el Barça el que invirtió en su formación. Fue el Barça el que le pagó un programa hormonal porque este chico no crecía. La primera impresión que tengo sobre él es cuando llega al mini estadi acompañado, lo presentan, le comentan que entrenará conmigo y yo lo tengo que acompañar abajo al vestuario. Chico tímido, la primera impresión es físicamente es un chico que parece alevín, más que infantil, pero normal. During his father's meeting with the team at a local restaurant, Jorge threatened to fly his son back home if Barça wouldn't commit to bringing Messi on board. Charles Reha decided not to call Jorge's bluff. Reha penned the contract on a paper napkin then and there. The club would agree to sign the 13-year-old to its youth academy, La Masia, and pay for the remainder of Messi's medical treatment, which included daily self-administered injections. Su principal qualidad era la velocidad con el balón en los pies. Y la verticalidad lo tenía bien claro. Estos famosos goles que hemos visto de, de carreras de 20, 30 o 40 metros haciendo zigzag y slaloms, ya lo hacía de pequeñito. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, another future legend was also finding his way. Cristiano Ronaldo dos Santos Aviero, better known as CR7 to his fans, was born in Funchal, a tiny yet idyllic town on the island of Madeira in Portugal. 
It's known for uh, not having much money, for again being full of working class. A lot of people don't leave the island and uh, that become like an oppressive uh, world. Uh, there's no much opportunity to grow socially and that converts many frustrated youngsters into alcoholics or they get into drugs. I think uh, Ronaldo's history is full of that. Named after American President Ronald Reagan, Ronaldo grew up playing football with his friends on the streets of Madeira. The beautiful game Ronaldo knew had no goal net and came to an abrupt stop any time cars drove down the makeshift field. Kids will try and emulate on that on the streets or they try and emulate on a FIFA game or they try and get that sort of ability. As a seven-year-old, Ronaldo's father, Jose, encouraged him to play for an amateur club and arena's youth team, where Jose was a part-time kit manager. Despite not knowing the rules of the game when he began playing the sport, Ronaldo fell in love with football, and he found joy in both winning and the pride-filled eyes of his father who watched from the sidelines. When Cristiano started being big in Lisbon, uh, where he left Madeira about 11 to, to develop as a player in Lisbon. And even when he went to Manchester, his dad wasn't that interested. He just wanted to be uh, in his own little world. Um, but that's the environment that uh, Cristiano grew up uh, with. Ronaldo's mother and sisters were a much harder sell as they were completely uninterested in young Cristiano's new hobby. He had, of course, uh, three brothers, sisters, and his mom had to look after the whole family. So his mom wasn't there either. Uh, and that, again, it's, it's like the perfect storm in a way to get to be Cristiano Ronaldo. I was a special kid. Uh, if you can speak with uh, my coaches, my friends, my teammates, everyone see that I was special. I was thinking I will be a professional player. I will be something in a football. He seems to be a man that once he's successfully conquered what he needed to do, he go on for another challenge. Uh, and I think that's part of his personality. You've seen that as a, he's always wants to be driven. He reminds me very much of LeBron James, he wants to keep challenging, wants to be, he's not a home guy where I'm gonna sit here for the next five years. It does show that they've got an inner call to their, to their personality that allows them to, to drive themselves forward. His family was not financially well off and Ronaldo wore hand-me-down clothes from his brother Hugo out on the pitch. But Ronaldo felt rich with love when his family watched him play football during his childhood. They grow up with an understanding of what it means to be working class and because they see it all around them, they see the lives that their parents live and their aunties and uncles live. Um, and when they get a chance to do something else, um, to go somewhere else, um, to make money, um, to be successful, to be known, I do think that they that they'd never quite leave, leave that behind. His brother uh, got mixed with the wrong people and, 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 and got involved in, in that side of things. His dad was, sadly, after he came back from the Mozambique war, uh, went away as a bright young kid and came back grey and became an alcoholic. Though the days of his youth were numbered, Ronaldo's football talent quickly catapulted him into an adult lifestyle. Away from his family and friends, at age 11, Ronaldo left Madeira for the mainland, joining the Sporting Lisbon youth camp. I believe that if they hadn't been born with the talent that they'd been born with, both of them probably wouldn't have strayed that far from home. They probably would have made their lives um, in those places, in those, in those towns and villages. Where Ronaldo's had to really go out in that big wild world earlier on and, and find out what the world's about. You know, yeah, he's had his mum with him and, and his siblings. But, you know, he's turned into a great man. If the parents let you fl uh, fly, it's easier for you to reach your dreams that is they actually want to control you and take you to school and they take you to university. So he did not have that control. And the fact that at 11, at 11, that he actually left Madeira to go to Lisbon, which again is like a huge jump from, from a, a world that stopped and stuck to a much modern city that Lisbon was. Uh, when you do that, you become a stronger person at 11, imagine. It was uh, the toughest time in my life. It was when I left my family with 11 uh, years old to live in a different world, which is Lisbon, in the same country, but it looked like it's a, a different part of the world. 
uh, was cry uh, almost every day. The adjustment was difficult for Ronaldo. He struggled with everything from extreme homesickness to the different speaking accent used by the people on the mainland. You have to remember that, I'm not going to say that they didn't have childhoods, but they didn't have normal childhoods. They both left, they left home when they were 12 and 14. One to go to uh, Barcelona, um, the other one to go to Lisbon. And from that point on, their lives were taken over by football, by the factory of football, the industry of football, to get these two extreme talents to where they needed to be. While life off the pitch was challenging, Ronaldo's performance began to take shape as he clearly outshined his counterparts. You have to know that Cristiano Ronaldo was in the building. Quite simply, he's a showman. He, he wants people to know where he is, what he's doing in the world. Sometimes shies away from the attention, but all too often he, he's all too happy posing on the beach, getting his photos in all the, the glamour magazines. He needs to be seeing Cristiano Ronaldo. He's a very wiry player, fantastic flair, lots of tricks on the ball. But what he perhaps lacked was a bit more physical uh, aspect to his game and, and certainly got into trouble. Ronaldo's dream was nearly derailed that year when he was diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat, a condition when untreated has proved fatal for some athletes. Ronaldo underwent successful surgery to put his football career back on track. Perhaps the two of them have kind of gone the way of the way their careers have gone. They, they've changed up because Ronaldo is now the physical specimen, the sprinter, the runner, the man that can cover long distances. You've probably never seen a player who has taken as much care about his physique and attention to the, the physicality of the game as Cristiano Ronaldo has done. By 16, Ronaldo had made waves in the football world becoming the first player in sporting's history to play in the under-16, under-17, under-18 B team and the first team in the same season. And the other reason that he stood out was that every time he got the ball, he, he just played almost like the biggest child in the playground. He got the ball and he ran straight at the heart of the Manchester United defence and he just kept going until he lost the ball every single time. He never passed it. He never lifted up his head, he just ran. But because he, he's so talented, they couldn't, they often couldn't get the ball from him. In the 2002-2003 season, Ronaldo's first time play caught the eye of Manchester United's Sir Alex Ferguson during a friendly between Man U and Lisbon in Portugal. I'm not going to sit here and say that everybody in that stadium knew they were watching a superstar because they didn't, but they were watching someone who, who stood out. And afterwards in the, in the locker room, they, the, the Manchester United players were, were saying to, to Alex Ferguson, that guy that we've just played, he's, we've got to sign him. Ferguson and his Man U players were so impressed by the 17-year-old Ronaldo, they courted him immediately after the game. That performance brought him to, to the attention of everybody connected to Manchester United and Ferguson brought the transfer forward by a year. He knew there was interest in from Arsenal and from Liverpool and thought to himself, I think now that this secret is out because of this game we need to do this and we need to do this now. And so he became a Manchester United player very quickly. And ever since, ever since that day when the majority of the Manchester United support saw him for the first time, he has been absolutely welded to Manchester United hearts since since that day. It's a good game, it's a good training, good, uh, we play against a good team and I'm enjoying to play today. Man U paid a record £12 million transfer fee as Ronaldo became the first ever Portuguese player signed to the franchise. Inherently, it seems in nature, Ronaldo has been blessed with the ability to be a showman. It seemed ingrained in his character that he wants to be the man, the star man, the performer. From the young age when he came to Manchester United, it was all about the, the fancy hairstyles and the boots as mu and the suntan as much as it was about his football. Certainly, he soon learned to get the tricks out of his game as much. He was, it was too many step overs, too many fancy tricks. And now he, 
he only affects football matches in the best way possible, in the most efficient way, and, and that's a testament to his ability to learn the game of football. Y Cristiano ha decidido, decidió en su momento en el Manchester United transformar su físico para convertirse en un delantero total, para poder cabecear, para poder golpear con las dos piernas, para, para tener más, más eh, velocidad, más, más, bueno, más potencia en general. Ronaldo's arrival at Manchester United was met with much hype and excitement, but unfortunately, the rookie began his career on the bench. However, in the 61st minute of Man U's opening day match against Bolton, Ronaldo did make his Premier League debut, subbing for a teammate. He occupies an almost unique position in the hearts of Manchester United. Manager Sir Alex Ferguson would prove to be instrumental in the growth of Ronaldo, who was not yet immune to adversity. In Ronaldo's first season with the club, Ferguson reduced Ronaldo to tears after a poor performance, telling his young player, who do you think you are, trying to play by yourself? You'll never be a player if you do that. In time, Ronaldo would prove this to be a lesson well learned. Remember sometimes uh, when we do something bad or we lost uh, some games, he kicked the chairs and he kicked the boots, he kicked everything, the, the waters, the drinks, and he's so red and she passed the ball. It, it's unbelievable, but it, it, it was good. It was always the first one and always the, the last one to go home. So I, I learned this kind of stuff with him. So I think when you have Ronaldo on the pitch, you know, even when he enters the field, he comes in last. It's like the gladiator, I'm here, the game now can begin, I'm here. With Ronaldo, you say, OK, you're there, show us how good you are. And they go, I'll show you how good I am. Here's this shot, here's this header. I dribble past four or five people. So I think Messi just with inside is driven. Ronaldo says he's got a point to prove, a chip on his shoulder. I'm going to show you how good you are. I am. Leo Messi, aunque él sea una individualidad, que sea un jugador que te decida el partido, él entiende que no está solo en el campo. Él entiende que está con muchos más jugadores. Cristiano Ronaldo es todo lo contrario. Cristiano es un, un animal goleador. What made it different for Kim was when Ronaldo went through the dressing room door and out onto the field, he became a warrior just like everybody else. He got kicked and he got up. He got kicked again and he got up again. And then he scored a winning goal. And Keaton, and that was enough. That was all that, that was all that, that mattered. Optimism would only grow, swirling around Manchester United and the sport's rising star. He may have looked different to, to how they look. He was tall, um, he had fake tan, he had earrings, he carried a handbag. Um, but that didn't matter to them because he was from a similar background, working class background. He had the drive and he wanted to work hard. And they judged him where it matters, which was on the training field and on the pitch on a Saturday afternoon. You go to Ronaldo and it's all about power, pace, scoring goals, me, the end product, the package uh, of what he brings to the field. Followed in the footsteps of Beckham becoming a global sporting icon, which we haven't really seen in football. Too often it's been the golf stars and it's, it's been the basketball stars or the NFL stars, but these, these guys are now global icons. During these years with Man U, the team would experience both the joy of winning and the agony of defeat. But there would be far more ups and downs over the course of Ronaldo's storied career with the Red Devils. Inherent in Ronaldo, he's a showman. You know, he's from from a very young age. He's, he was all about the hairstyle and the boots, the coloured boots, as much as he was about the football, the tricks on the ball. Over time, he learned to to kind of bury that almost instinctive desire to, to play play the showman on the field with the tricks, the step overs, and just affect games in the best way possible, making the most of his ability and the most of his possession and positions on the pitch. He has a different build, he has that really impressive, upright, statuesque running style. He looks like he could run through a brick wall and not feel it. He, he has done work really, really hard to get his physique to allow him to jump higher than anybody have uh, the acceleration better than anybody uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, have a, a strong body that he can, he can compete with, with strong centre-backs. He's, he's like a predator now. He'll wait and sense where the weakness is and then he'll go and exploit and score. Ronaldo evolved into an outstanding player. Uh, Messi was born into a team, into a philosophy with Johan Cruyff and with Pep Guardiola that we're going to play this way, this is how you play, we're going to groom you into this style of football and we're going to groom the style of football into what you can do. 
So it was sort of a marriage made in heaven, really. You know, Messi, as I said, is content with Barcelona. It suits, it's like his family. Over the next few years, Messi blossomed, growing off and on the pitch, where he quickly rose through the junior ranks. He still plays for fun. You can see it on his face that he just loves the game of football. You cannot get the ball off him. He will weave in and out, almost as if he's been programmed by a computer. At 17 years old, Messi made his professional debut in the 2004-2005 season, becoming the second youngest player to take the field for Barcelona's first team. And he makes the game look so simple uh, and graceful and elegant. It's, it's poetry. When he plays, he has such a, a feeling of what he's doing. You can put any type of music towards that. The best place he's been at the club that was winning the, winning the most trophies, scoring the most beautiful goals, living in the most beautiful place, earning more than he could have ever have dreamt of earlier in his life. There was no, unless he was gonna go home to Argentina and play there, which he probably will at the end of his career, but he was not gonna do it in his peak years. The teenage Messi's dreams had indeed become a reality. Uh, when you do that, you become a stronger person. You need all that to become uh, Messi and you need all that to become Ronaldo. Older observers of football don't like to say that Messi's better than Pelé was or better than Cruyff or better than Maradona. But I don't know if anybody really done what Messi does week in, week out with the ball. Absolutely astonishing from the man from Argentina. Winning nearly every individual accolade imaginable, Ronaldo lifted his teammates alongside him during his meteoric rise as United brought home two Carling Cups and three Premier League championships. We credit Sir Alex Ferguson a lot with being his football father figure and he helped him realise the physical aspects of football goes alongside the, the undoubted talent that he already had. I think with Ronaldo take the game and have that interest globally, is down to these two athletes. Um, and may it long continue. I mean, enjoy it while it lasts, because it won't last forever. With a resume boasting 118 goals and 292 appearances over six seasons, Ronaldo's career with Manchester United played out like a fairy tale, leaving the competitive star wanting more. They would see Ronaldo preening a little bit, and they knew he wanted to be the, wanted to be the star of the show. But he was the star of the show. Ronaldo may have left the club even earlier had it not been for his close relationship with Ferguson. Heartbroken and accepting at the same time. It's almost like the end of a relationship when you know you have to go your separate ways because it's the right thing to do, but it's painful at the same time. It was a little bit like that. A titan of the football world, Ferguson embraced his player on an emotional level when Ronaldo's father died of an alcohol-related illness. Cristiano was 20 years old. His dad became an alcoholic. The early memories of Cristiano Ronaldo's getting his dad out of a bar, drunk because he could not sleep if his dad wasn't there. My daddy uh, was sick in London, uh, and he was in hospital very bad. And I, I had a conversation with, uh, with him, and I say, boss, I want to I don't feel good. I want to I wanna see my dad, Cristiano. You want to go one day, two days, one week? You can go. I'm going to miss you. I miss you here because you know that you are important, but your, your daddy is in the first place. Despite his affection for his manager, the 24-year-old was ready for a new challenge. Moving on to Real Madrid in 2009 for a then record transfer fee of 80 million pounds. That's why I think in Ronaldo's world, he will finish with Real Madrid the best he can, whether that's a Champions League and to win that consecutive three times and then go on for another challenge. Hopefully it would be out here in the US to, to be that brand and that market and have the same sort of impact that maybe you know, David Beckham had. Because of the way it was handled and the way it happened, there was no rancor. There was no anger, like there often is. Every time Cristiano Ronaldo goes back to Old Trafford, he's treated like a returning hero because he'd given so much to them during a really important time. Even today, Manchester United fans have a special place in their hearts for the Portuguese goalmaker. 
Not only are they rivals on the pitch, but they can evenly match each other on various endorsements and business ventures as well. A lot of people go to management and coaching who still have something to prove when they finish their playing career. You know, they, they, they have a, a reason to go and do more. What reason do these two guys have to ever do anything? They've nothing to prove. We've looked at the journeys they took to become the legends they are today. Here's a matchup of stats for Ronaldo versus Messi. Just looking at the players side by side, most would think that Ronaldo would have a slight advantage over Messi, but that's not necessarily true. Messi is a, a natural genius. You look at Ronaldo, if you like, and he's worked at, at being a genius. Well, I think when you look at Messi, it just comes naturally to him. For me, Messi is not human, and Cristiano is the best of the human. When he wants to win, it's like, <laughs> if you don't have a chance, he will run. <laughs> go to the goalkeeper, and give it up. This is Barcelona's strength. So if he has to go all the way, he has to pass Yaga today, eventually, or Busquets, or, eventually, or Puyol, or Rafa Marquez, whoever is playing. Mm. This is Rafa. one nil. Ronaldo stands at six foot two, while yes, Messi is a tad shorter at five foot seven, but their builds are similar. Ronaldo was a bit thinner when starting out, but quickly muscled up due to the rigorous training sessions while at Sporting in Man United. However, their playing style is where they show their domination on the pitch. In football, at the end, it's es como todo, como hay gente que le encanta que un futbolista sea más peleón o que vaya mejor arriba o que tenga mejores cualidades físicas y otros que lo que necesitan es, son regates, es el gambeteo, es el, el que sea más técnico. Young players from across the globe practice day and night to emulate their moves. Messi is renowned for making fast moves through both defenders and midfielders. His footwork is unmatched. He uses his low center of gravity along with unreal body feints and dribbling skills to slice and dice the opposition and score from anywhere around the 18-yard box. With Messi, you know he's going to get it to feet, but his manipulation of the ball, his low center of gravity, his understanding of when to pass it. I mean, he's put international players on their backside by just running with them, you know? I wouldn't old school say, oh, you've got to do this, because you can't just kick them, because they would make you look stupid. Lo han puesto como segundo punta, ha ido cambiando posiciones, pero él siempre arranca de campo. Eh, todo el mundo, todos los jugadores, viene para acá, viene, viene Leo Messi, peligro. Ronaldo also has a few tricks of his own up his sleeve. The Sultan of the Stepover makes calming up opponents look like child's play on the pitch. In front of the goal, he dominates. Scoring goals is second nature to this athlete. Pero soluciona con un gol de falta, con un disparo de fuera del área. Whether by an exquisitely timed bicycle kick, a Ronaldo rainbow, or a power-packed header, this phenomenal forward is a feared adversary on any pitch. As for their awards, well, it's pretty evenly matched up as well. Each has two UEFA championships, numerous league championships, and as of 2018, tied for the number of Ballon d'Or wins. Es verdad que están empatados, pero eso no puede ser, porque al final eso es un año, eh, te puede ir mejor, te puede ir peor, puedes marcar más goles, menos, o ganar más títulos o menos. Pero en realidad eso no, no, no va a dictaminar quién es el mejor. Now both at La Liga and firmly ensconced in their own clubs, Messi at Barcelona, Ronaldo at Real Madrid, this rivalry was taken to a new level. Of course, there are teams all over the world with significant rivalries inside their league. There's Man United versus Man City, Chelsea versus Arsenal. But you can expect Spanish fans to take the day off to cheer their favorite team when Barca and Madrid come face to face. Ronaldo has flourished at Real Madrid, not only winning the hearts of Madrid fans, but the respect of his teammates. In turn, Messi is the hero of Barca, and the fans love him for it. He is the unspoken leader of the team, making headlines with every championship win and every distinguished goal. There has always been talk of offers that would lead Messi to one day leaving this sacred ground. But that has yet to be seen.
Deep in the heart of Barcelona, you'll find an eatery that at first glance resembles one of the many downtown restaurants in that area. Step inside and you will discover one of Messi's boyhood dreams come to life. The Messi's family was looking for a reference to open this restaurant here. What is the difference in this concept? Because it's a restaurant for everyone, for families, for businessmen, for make meetings, make uh, big groups. This is a new concept like a village. We have, for example, when in, just in terms of the restaurant, we have like the kiosk and the colmado. It's very typical from here, from Spain, in any village you can find something like this. And they have the barber shop, and the, the bar of the village that we are right now. We have like a gold kick right here with the Messi and uh, Suarez t-shirt, it's amazing. And uh, we have the church, we have like uh, the square of the village. Every table that we take a seat in the restaurant, we recommend always to share. Put a dish in the middle and share the thing, like a village. Like uh, when you go to the bar with your friends and make like a, uh, give them a beer, give them a sangria, give them a good, nice wine and share everything. We're here with Monica Morales, head chef of Bella Vista, and she's going to prepare us a great dish. Hola, Monica. Hola. ¿Qué nos vas a preparar? Bueno, vamos a preparar una tartaleta de buey de mar que lo mezclamos con una salsa tártara. Después lo vamos a terminar con el aguacate cortado en forma de flor y pondremos matces y aromas. Esto se llama pasta filo. Es una capa súper fina que juntamos, ponemos un poquito de aceite y lo pegamos con una gotita de clara de huevo. Tenemos la masa. Esta es la salsa tartara con muy de mar. Aquí puede pasar de todo. Realmente son sabores que lo tenemos todos en la memoria. Jugamos un poco con los recuerdos cuando comemos. Claro. De ahí la expresión de, ay, me recuerda al plato que hacía mi madre, o me recuerda al plato que hacía mi abuela. Y es como, es como el verde de un campo de fútbol, ahora que estamos en el... Sí, bueno, también. <risa> ¿No? I never thought I would have the pleasure of just tasting the second most popular dish in Bellavista. Have, lo tengo que hacer de una vez, ¿no? I just have to do it in, once. See if I can do it. Oh! Ay, joder. Está buenísimo. Sometimes the people come here with the Barcelona t-shirt because we have to get them to a match or something and come to the restaurant. And, and the people ask, Mass is here? They say, you can explain in two ways, right? Mess is the owner, Mess is not the, the manager. But I say like a joke, but I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna send a message for him to come to the restaurant and bring the dessert for you to the table. Much like Messi, Ronaldo also dabbles in the restaurant industry. Tatel, located in Madrid, is a co-venture he started with fellow athlete Rafa Nadal. But for Ronaldo, his business acumen doesn't stop at a restaurant. His brand, CR7, reaches out far and wide. His brand really is everyday, uh, tailored, classic choices that every guy needs. From his posh hotels in Lisbon and hometown Madeira, numerous fragrances, fashion apparel, and an underwear line. It's kind of a dream what's uh, happened through in my life the last 10 years. Uh, I have did many, many things, but to do it this fragrance for me, it's, it's unbelievable because it's something that I use every day. A guy looking at all of these different brands and making these choices of, of purchasing these different brands that are from Ronaldo is, is a guy that admires him and wants to maybe emulate the confidence. Es verdad que tiene un carácter más exhibicionista, yo creo, que Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo tiene una personalidad arrolladora, le encanta ser el centro de atención, es un tipo que no le tiene miedo a la presión, 
Even Bugatti slapped a CR7 on one of their new models in honor of the soccer star. Did we also mention his many, many endorsements? Messi is a lot more subdued, laid back. I like to say chill chic, whereas Ronaldo is more fly chic. Eh, ellos, Cristiano. Es un jugador que le gusta mucho exhibirse porque tiene un físico envidiable, tiene rasgos de, de modelo y eso las marcas lo saben, ¿no? De hecho, él tiene muchos más sponsors que Leo Messi. Leo es un jugador más con los pies en el suelo, eh, para la marca es siempre interesante, pero es una persona mucho más recogida, mucho más de, de familia. Back to endorsement deals. Ronaldo and Messi are not limited to placing their names on their own restaurants and products. Multi-billion dollar companies literally fight to death for endorsement deals from both of these legends. For example, both are heavily featured on international airlines, various athletic gear and health supplements. Plus, don't forget the video games. You can't have an EA Sports FIFA game without these two. Ronaldo is a luxury product. Messi is an aspirational product. Where Ronaldo is selling French champagne, Messi is selling orange soda in Latin America. Oh, the Messi fans took the bus to the stadium and they saved up for a long time to be able to purchase the stadium tickets. And all the fans, they're, they're driving up to the stadium, they already have parking paid for. Ronaldo is going to the 65-year-old man who, can, who dreams of what he could have been when he was 10 years old. Off the pitch, Ronaldo and Messi still command attention from those fans and the press, especially when it comes to their sense of style. Ronaldo style versus Messi, you see a very strong comparison to like where they play. With Messi, you have a lot more laid back, like a lot more uh, common sneaker wear. Ronaldo, it's like luxury everything. A lot more boisterous patterns, colors, uh, things that are a lot more striking to the eye. Messi and Ronaldo's signatures do not stop at their own closets, but translate over to their significant others as well. Ronaldo has definitely had his share of high-profile relationships, most recently with supermodel Irina Shayak and now Georgina Rodriguez. Georgina is not only mother to their newborn daughter, but had a modeling career and worked as a Gucci retail associate. To be with Ronaldo, you'd better be up to date with your own sense of style. Ronaldo is a brilliant marketer. He has definitely taken what God has given him and gone and turned it into a mega powerhouse business. And he's done it well. He is blessed with gorgeous looks. He's great at what he does, if not the very best. Fits are always pretty tailored. Most of the time when you see him in a jacket, it is more outerwear, not necessarily blazer, although he does wear a good suit. But a lot of times you'll see him in a, in a really awesome leather jacket, a cool texture or a cool you know, zipper, something, a lot of details that kind of represent a lot of money. Stardom is not only about the clothes you wear, but every aspect of your appearance. And when it comes to Ronaldo, he not only looks after his physique, but his skincare regimen is also a high priority. And it's one of Ronaldo's favorites. This is great anti-aging moisturizer for men. It has that beautiful sleek look. It helps with razor burn. It's great for sensitive skin. Helps to plump out the wrinkles that they're actually worried about. That's why Ronaldo looks like he's just flawless. Same goes for Messi. Now married to childhood sweetheart, Antonella Racuzzo, Antonella makes her own fashion headlines. When Messi and Antonia finally tied the knot, the bride made sure that her dress also made a fashion statement. Rosa Clara is a company located in Barcelona, in Spain. We are dedicated to the design of dresses of wedding and dresses of fiesta. Estamos en más de 70 países. Nuestra relación con Antonella dura ya desde, desde hace muchos años, prácticamente desde que ella llegó a España. La hemos acompañado en prácticamente todos sus momentos especiales. Para su boda con, con Leo Messi hemos hecho dos vestidos a Antonella, uno para la ceremonia 
y otro para el momento de la fiesta, más distendido, más cómodo, ya para estar bailando. I think in regards to Messi's uh, wife's wedding dress being over the top, I think it says a lot about them as a couple. Directly, what it says about him is that there's nothing too good for her. When getting hitched to an international sports figure, you can bet your wedding will make headlines and in Messi's case, shut down a city. When he got married in Argentina and they basically shut down half of Argentina for his wedding, he is kind of royalty there, I just have to say. <laughs> but more so security wise, I think it, they have to. It's a special moment. It's the most special day for him and his wife. And I don't want choppers flying around if I'm them. I don't want paparazzi lurking in the uh, bushes, you know? Um, the safety is a huge factor. This sort of celebrity status translates to other areas of both Messi and Ronaldo's life, whether it's a night out to eat or a family holiday. P. Diddy said, more money, more problems, which is absolutely true for a celebrity. The more money they make, the more famous they become, the less privacy, the less normal life that they are going to live. Es muy demagógico decir que qué guay es el Cristiano Ronaldo porque tiene mucha pasta y porque todo el mundo le conoce y porque tiene éxito y tal. Pero él sacrifica muchas cosas. Él casi no sale, él prácticamente tiene vida monacal. Will be unfair if I will say that my moment now and the place where I am now, it's not the place that I'm always dream. Sometimes it's, well, it's, I prefer to say that this is the perfect life that I, that I always dreaming because I cannot complain. You know, a lot of times they get a lot of flack for spending these elaborate amounts on vacation. It's, you know, renting these yachts and, you know, renting out hotels and doing things that people say, wow, why would they spend all their money on that? But really what it's about is they're just trying to find privacy. Quite clearly is that when he walks into a pitch, he's an, he's an extraordinary human, he's a Martian, he's just from another planet. But as soon as he walks out of this wide rectangular, it's just a normal guy. It's just a normal guy that needs to be uh, looked after, needs people around that that um, that protect him. So a lot of the times they're attracting a crowd, and you have Leo Messi seeing a crowd and just going away from it. Uh, but there's, there's normality in those social networks, pictures or videos. It's part of the business. I have to respect that. They have to sell. They have to make money. Even though the various marketing deals do make a great deal of cash, not all of it stays in their personal bank accounts or goes to pay for luxurious vacations. This family was trying to raise money for their son. He has a rare form of brain cancer and he has many seizures daily. So they asked him, hey, can you donate an old jersey, an old pair of cleats so that we can try and raise some money? They needed $83,000 for the surgery this little baby needed. So what did he do? He said, okay, I'll give you that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pay for the entire procedure, all $83,000. A great deal of both Messi and Ronaldo's income goes to charity. Both have given multi-million dollar grants to charities such as UNICEF and Make-A-Wish Foundation. 19,000 niños menores de 5 años no tienen que morir cada día, pero mueren. Mi nombre es Lionel Messi y yo creo que esa cifra debería ser cero. And it's not just a matter of check writing for these two superstars. It often goes unnoticed for these two, you know, for, for all their power, all their acclaim, they, they do a lot of work and give a lot back. From Messi's foundation building classrooms in war-torn Syria, to Ronaldo giving blood. Certainly they can make difference in their, just their cash donations as well. Both of them are, are, are really high up there in terms of the amount of money they dedicate to, to charity work away from football. They get involved on a personal level and their fans mean a great deal to them. Cristiano se sigue mucho en, la, en las redes sociales, que son siempre un, un arma de, de doble filo, y, pero también al mismo tiempo que se exhibe, y, y exhibe su casa, exhibe su coche, exhibe su viaje, sus negocios, él también da cuenta de su, de su obra social, de su carácter solidario. Es una persona que, que dona médula todos los meses, es una persona que ha pagado mucho dinero para que se arreglen los los incendios en Portugal. Nadie habla mal, habla mal de Cristiano, porque Cristiano ha invertido mucho en su gente y en su país. Leo Messi sucede lo mismo. Tiene una fundación, 
tienen más de 50 puntos por todo el mundo. Son personas que tienen mucho, pero que también dan. The combination of their actual skills on the pitch and the size of their hearts further emphasizes the influence these two legends have around the world. Hoy en día los deportistas son muy importantes como como imágenes, como iconos para para los jóvenes y para la sociedad en general. Y yo creo que estos dos precisamente no se han perdido en juergas, en escándalos, en nada de eso. A estos solo los conoces por jugar al fútbol. A Messi y a Cristiano solamente les conoces por jugar al fútbol y por tener una vida más o menos ordenada con su familia, con sus hijos, con su bueno, su, su gente, ¿no? su, su séquito también. When both Ronaldo and Messi have so many awards and championship wins under their belt, it's difficult to understand why the World Cup is so important. There has always been that drive to be better. You know, statistics will say both scored goals, both won trophies, Ballon d'Or, European Player of the Year, very, very similar. It's going to be very, very difficult for everyone. And I hope that the Argentina will be able to do the right thing and we will el objetivo y, y vamos a... The World Cup is a funny one because both of them have been the global stars, the best players in the world. I think it's now that the luck since 2008 they've, they've dominated the, the World Player of the Year awards. And yet neither of them have actually established themselves and performed to the, a high level at a World Cup finals. They both would love to win the World Cup. There's, there's so much that they, it is a team sport, but personally you can see that both would love to be the man that delivers the World Cup for their nation. Ganar una Copa del Mundo para cualquier estrella es, yo creo que es fundamental. De hecho, el gran debate acerca de los de los grandes de la historia de Di Stefano, de Pelé, de, de Maradona, de Cruz. Each have gone to the much anticipated world event a few times, and each has fallen short of the much coveted win. When you lost the big competitions, when you don't go through any uh, groups, uh, national team or Real Madrid or whatever. It's, it's the most complicated moments is when you lost. When you lost and when you lost the finals, or it's the most uh, hardest moments. It is a shame that those two uh, players haven't had, throughout their career, better teams, but of course, you know, Portugal have won the European Championships. For Ronaldo, his team, Portugal, has barely made it past the first stages. At one point, Tensions were running so high that he clashed with his fellow Manchester United teammate Wayne Rooney. Certainly, they were peers going into the 2006 World Cup, where obviously Rooney was sent off in controversial fashion, and Cristiano Ronaldo was involved in that. You've got this incredible story. You've got England going out of the World Cup, and you've got these two guys who play for England's biggest and most famous and successful club clashing on the field in front of the world's eye. Everybody's watching. It's a fantastic story. As it happened, the reality of the situation, looking back now, is that 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 didn't happen. Ronaldo and Rooney are actually, I wouldn't say they're close, but there's a fondness there, and there's certainly a mutual respect. For Messi, the story is a bit different. Argentina is one of the strongest teams competing for the cup. It's his best chance, his best opportunity. He showed in the playoff the country needed him. However, Messi's team was handed a heartbreaking blow after losing to the Germans in the 2014 World Cup. Y que un jugador como Messi eh, tenga que tener una, una pequeña mancha en el expediente para todo el mundo, como es eh, la selección, parece mentira, ¿no? Parece que, que no para mí no necesita ganar nada con la selección para, para que se le considere uno de los mejores de la historia, porque yo creo que lo es. Y, y en el caso de Cristiano hubiera pasado lo mismo si no hubiera ganado esa Eurocopa de, año, de hace apenas un año con, con su selección. Yo creo que es muy importante para ellos sentir que lideran a un país hacia, hacia una victoria, ¿no? en, en, como lo hicieron Maradona en su momento, Pelé en su momento. Lionel Messi, obviamente, nearly um, succeeded in doing that in 2010, but again, disappointed in the final, perhaps against Holland. And when it was there, there for the taking, that he could lead his nation to the World Cup, he hasn't done that. Certainly, Ronaldo hasn't done it with Portugal. The World Cup trophy may always be an elusive win for both Ronaldo and Messi. As they get further in their careers, the chances for a World Cup also diminish. And Argentina, in a way, with Messi, they're living a bit of a golden era because they played one World Cup final and two Copa America finals. He played a third one earlier on. So it's just that little bit that is needed to win the World Cup. 
those that in 20 years time or 30 years time will look back and say, ah, but Messi did not win a World Cup, it will mean that you never understood what Messi is. Messi is well ahead winning World Cups. But, you know, Messi's gone to two finals in South America and lost them both. So the World Cup is probably the last time we're going to see him go toe to toe at the highest level that we've got in Russia. Would love to perform on the stage. They would love to be the main man, the driving force to lead their country to World Cup glory. Whether either of them will be able to do that remains open to debate. I'm not quite sure that neither Argentina or Portugal have got the best sides or the best managers equipped to deliver over the course of a, a major tournament. And it would be a shame because some of these great players have got the World Cup win to their name and Messi and Ronaldo haven't. It won't take away anything from the, their ability and their stature as players, but it will be the gloss on their career if they could lead their countries to the World Cup. Much like their playing styles, attitude and lifestyle, their projected future holds different alternatives for both Messi and Ronaldo. El futuro de, de las superestrellas siempre es complicado. Yo no veo a ninguno de los dos siendo entrenador, igual me equivoco, a ninguno de los dos, pero es difícil tener que luego tomar decisiones como entrenador o irte como director deportivo y tener que fichar a uno a otro, explicarle a uno a otro. Al final son labores que son muy ingratas ¿no? para, para, para los futbolistas y los que son muy muy top, los que han sido muy élite como lo están siendo Messi y Cristiano, que han sido, están siendo los mejores jugadores seguramente de la historia, luego les cuesta mucho. Staying in football, in terms of coaching or managing, I don't see that. Um, I'm not sure that they would. A lot of people go into management and coaching, they still have something to prove when they finish their playing career. You know, they, they, they have a a reason to go and do more. What reason do these two guys have to ever do anything? They've nothing to prove. It's not surprising that most believe Messi will continue his quiet and private lifestyle. Lionel Messi, I think, will possibly one of those players that would just quietly go away, kind of ease himself away from the, the football side of things. I think that both Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi have not been asked what they're going to do in the future. Sobre todo porque a día de hoy ellos únicamente son futbolistas. Por la infancia que han tenido y el, y el tiempo que han invertido en el fútbol, no les ha dado eh, el momento para estudiar o formarse en, en otra profesión. Sinceramente, yo creo que ellos mmm, querrán vivir de sus negocios, que tienen mucho, Cristiano con sus hoteles, con su marca de ropa. Leo Messi pues es una incógnita realmente, porque sí que es cierto que él tiene muchas inversiones en en marcas de complemento, ropa, pero no se sabe realmente lo que lo que hará. Is it possible that Messi could even leave Spain for his beloved home country? A mí me gustaría que se quedara a vivir aquí. Creo que está eh, viviendo una época muy buena aquí en Barcelona. Creo que se siente feliz. Su mundo paralelo al, al profesional del fútbol veo que está apostando pues por eso ser un pequeño empresario, pero también sé y creo que quiere volver a Rosario a, a su ciudad y, y lo entiendo. He wants to play in the first division in Argentina with the new old boys. I can see that happening at some point, 35, 36, and he could just play until 40 if he wanted to. He loves football. After that, home. Just go home to his kids, to his wife. I don't see him pursuing a career anywhere else. I don't see him being a coach. He will be back in Rosario, I think if he feels that Argentina uh, is, is a strong country. And maybe just look after kids in the academy of New, New Soul Boys. I just don't see anything else. Maybe into politics as well for Messi, because Argentina's his home. I know he left home at such a young age, and some people questioned how much he is rooted to his, his native homeland in Argentina. But you get the impression that he will want to go back there and do some a power of good back in his home country. As for Ronaldo, he will stay in the spotlight. Forty years from now, you'd, you'd see Cristiano Ronaldo, I would see, still opening hotels, turning up to the openings, to the FIFA galas. I think Cristiano Ronaldo will fit perfectly into that afterlife of football. I think the poll will be fine that someone like Ronaldo probably does quite a bit in the media. When I finish my career, I want to be involved uh, in a fashion area, I mean, in my brand. 
There have even been rumours about Ronaldo possibly appearing on the silver screen. He is a, is a man who is in a running machine, who, um, who at some point doesn't know that that running machine will stop, but he will. And when it does stop, uh, let's see what happens. He will collapse because he wants to be on the stage constantly, but at that point the lights will go off. But he's, he's, he's beaten bigger obstacles than that. He will stand up eventually and see that, uh, oh, I've got four hotels and you know, there's all these other things that I'm involved with, which will make him survive. And if, meanwhile, they, they gave him in a couple of scripts from Hollywood. I think they go off and live their lives. I think that's what they'll do because you don't live a life when you're as famous as they are and as talented as they are. They play football all the time. Y creo que van a vivir muy bien de ser Messi y de ser Cristiano durante muchos años y muchas generaciones. Regardless of where they end up, they both started from humble beginnings, endured several hardships to become successful, and with hard work and a little bit of luck, both Ronaldo and Messi became legends. They will endure in soccer history as two of the greatest athletes to play the beautiful game. He'll be 60 and we'll still go and see him. I'll go and see him and say, Leo, you know, those days, my God, I still watch the videos. And, because I think we're never, ever, ever going to see anything like it again. What would be lovely afterwards is when it's all done and they're in their 40s or 50s, put them on a beach somewhere in the Caribbean and let them just talk and, and see what comes out because I think they will probably end up telling you a lot about each other and, and how it was, and I think that would be a special, special time because, as I said, they're special players. Yes, he's, he's an unbelievable player, and maybe in the end of, of me, maybe he pushed me more, harder, to be better and better. But in my mind, I'm, I'm the best, and I work uh, like the best. So this is going to be my, the way I see my life to the end of my life. Who's the greatest? Well, that's for you to decide. Regardless of where they end up, they both started from humble beginnings, endured several hardships to become successful, and with hard work and a little bit of luck, both Ronaldo and Messi became legends. They will endure in soccer history as two of the greatest athletes to play the beautiful game. He'll be 60 and we'll still go and see him, I'll go and see him, and Say, Leo, you know, those days, my God, I still watch the videos. And, because I think we're never, ever, ever going to see anything like it again. What would be lovely afterwards is when it's all done and they're in their